Jan, just to give you a quick head start, um, we're going to need just like a couple pieces of equipment for the workout today. Um, so I'll give you time to get those ready. Um, you'll want just a stable chair, um, something ideally without armrests. If you have a folded up towel or a piece of exercise foam that won't slip slide on your floor, um, a scarf or a bandana is helpful. And then just a sticky note with one big letter written on it, something about like two inches by two inches. All right, we will go ahead and get started. Welcome to this Rogue in Motion webinar. My name is Alex. I'm a physical therapist and a board certified neurologic clinical specialist. I'll be leading the presentation today. Um, let's go ahead and talk about what some of our objectives are. The most important things that we want to highlight today is that you become familiar with some exercise specific two Parkinson's disease specifically you we utilize the power moves and that stands for PWR or Parkinson wellness recovery so we're gonna talk a little bit about those and their benefit and then why we want to incorporate them in addition to the basic power moves we'll also be incorporating in multiple balance systems including our somatosensation and proprioception or our body's ability to know where we are in space and our vestibular system which is the inner ear that functions like a bubble level uh, basically to help orient you to where your head and your body are in space and just as a quick reminder, you will need a couple pieces of equipment for our class today. Nothing major. You should have all of these things in your home. Ideally, a sturdy chair that does not have armrests, either a folded up towel or a piece of exercise foam like an Airx mat. Ideally, just make sure if you are using the towel that it can't slip. You would want to do this maybe on carpet or like put it on a bath mat. Um, but we just want something a little bit squishy that you can stand on. I'd like for you to have a small scarf or bandana, um, something that's maybe like one foot by one foot, even just a paper towel would work, um, whatever you can really quickly grab, similar to a bandana. And then grab a sticky note uh, or a small piece of paper, something roughly two inches by two inches. And in big, bold text, write uh, whatever letter you choose. So in my example, that sticky note has a big letter A on it. Um, if you can see me on the screen, this is the one that I'm going to be using for the exercises. Um, anything with a big, bold outline will work very, very well for our exercise. So a little bit more about our introductions. I said already, my name is Alex. I am a physical therapist and I have been for about 10 years now. I'm also board certified as a neurologic clinical specialist for neurologic physical therapy that's required additional training and a certification exam that I maintain on a regular basis. I also have additional training and certifications, both in treatment specific for Parkinson's disease and in dizziness, vertigo, and inner ear issues. That's something that I um, work with frequently in my practice. And then Rogue, why you're here is for Rogue in Motion. Rogue is a specialty gym for people with Parkinson's or other similar conditions. We're located in Fountain Valley, California. All of our instructors for our in-person classes are physical therapists, but we, in addition to our in-person group fitness classes, offer online group fitness classes, all of which are also taught by physical therapists. So um, what we're going to be focusing on today is the vestibular system and how to improve balance through exercises like the power moves. So um, next time we do a Rogue Emotion presentation, we'll focus more on the high intensity side of things. But today we really want to focus on that kind of lower intensity, slower, more large amplitude, purposeful movements. 
So how we can incorporate balance training into our classes is um, really in a multitude of ways. The first of which and the most obvious is to incorporate head movement. So during our workout today, I'll be saying things like follow your hand with your eyes, um, making sure that you are tracking and moving your head from side to side and up and down through your full range of motion. I'll also be encouraging you to throw or catch. Um, we got that handkerchief ready. You could also use a small ball or a hacky sack. We're going to include a lot of different position changes, all of which is stimulating your body, helping you to learn where you are in space, which stimulates the inner ear. And just like muscles can get stronger, our balance system can get stronger as well. We'll be changing the type of flooring that we're standing on. That's why I asked you to grab that exercise foam or folded up towel because when you're on a different surface, you minimize your body's ability to feel where you are, like the contact of your feet on the floor, and that makes the other systems work harder, specifically the inner ear. Similarly, we'll try different exercises with our eyes open versus eyes closed, because when your eyes are closed, again, that removes one of the systems that you rely on for balance, and it forces the other systems to pick up the slack. And that's just a few ways in which we try to improve balance in our classes, but just to give you an idea. So next, I want to just very quickly highlight the purpose of the power moves in case people are not familiar. They really try to target the primary movement deficits of Parkinson's disease um, so that each exercise has a specific function. And you can get more information on their website, but just to highlight, in every position that we use the power up, it is to focus on posture. So you're going to be opening up your chest, expanding your uh, pectoral muscles and your shoulder to really build up the strength of the muscles that hold you up against gravity, which primarily are the muscles on our backside, our glutes, our spinal extensors, a lot of the muscles around the shoulder blade, even on the back of the neck. Next is the power rock, and no matter what position we're in, the power rock is to help facilitate a weight shift. A weight shift is the foundation of every single movement that we make, and it's really important for being able to initiate gait smoothly um, in order to empty one foot of weight so that it can take a big step without getting that feeling that your feet are glued to the floor. The power twist is for trunk rotation, which helps to reduce rigidity of the spine and allow for more natural dissociation of the upper body from the lower body, which is also very important for things like gait. It allows you to swing your arms and to take longer steps. And then in every position, the power step is to promote transitional movements and initiation of gait. With all of the exercises we do today, I want for you to try and give your most maximal effort and move with your biggest amplitude. I even encourage you to count out loud with me using a nice loud voice. Parkinson's tends to create a sensory perceptual mismatch, meaning that you feel like your movements are normal, but to anyone else around you, they are going to see your movements as being particularly small. So you have to overdo it. You have to move bigger than what feels natural in order to achieve what's actually just normal movement. And this quick slide here is the rate of perceived stability. And essentially, a number one means that you feel completely stable. And a number 10 means that you feel like you're about to fall. And in order for balance exercise to be beneficial and to truly improve your balance over time, you want to be working at the six, seven, eight range. It should be challenging. It should be hard. But it should also be set up in a way where you can keep yourself safe. 
Um, and we'll talk more about this at the end, but just a quick highlight about Rogue in Motion. It is our online membership. And through the membership, you have unlimited access to live exercise classes, as well as thousands of recordings in the video library, which you can access at any time on demand. We have exercise and speech classes. We um, also offer a 30-minute consult to get started. So if you do want to join, uh, once you sign up, you'll meet with Claire. She's the owner. She can really help you navigate using the online system to pick classes and get the most benefit out of the membership. We do a weekly PD school watch party. That's displaying and talking about content through Dr. Lori Mishley, who's a naturopathic physician based in Seattle, who does a lot of research on diet, um, medications, and supplements and nutraceuticals for people with Parkinson's. We also do a monthly educational meeting and a membership meeting. So you can tune in, give any feedback that you have, ask questions, make recommendations. Um, and we really feel like we have a super cool community Many of our online members tune in regularly for live classes. They're chatting with each other. They're supporting one another, offering recommendations um, of things that have been beneficial for them. So it, it just helps to connect you not only with physical therapists teaching the class, but with other people taking the class. And then if you want to check out our schedule, it is available on our website, but you can see there's a variety of different types of classes, including cardio, power moves, high intensity interval training, functional strength training, and boxing, as well as a cooking class and speech classes. And then last thing I want to talk about before we actually get down to our exercise is that you, um, through participation in our webinar today, can get a month for free. You're going to go to the Rogue in Motion website. It's going to bring you to this page. Um, automatically, you can do a seven-day free trial, but if you use the code free month, that will give you an additional month for free. You just want to click on the monthly option, enter in the free code, and then this slide shows that um, once you enter in that code down at the bottom, it brings it to the promotional price of $0. And that will allow you to try as many classes as you want during that month um, to really see if it's something that you enjoy and something that could be beneficial for you. And then I did notice a couple folks just logged in. Before we get fully started with the workout, if you could grab for me a sturdy chair, um, a sticky note or something with your favorite letter written on it, a handkerchief or a hand towel or a paper towel or whatever you've got close by, and something soft with which you could stand on. It could be exercise foam or even just a folded towel. Um, and then we'll get started with our actual workout. So I'm going to stop screen sharing now. And then we will do um, about a 35 or so minute workout and then save time at the end if there's a couple of questions. Um, and also I'll be able to re-display like that code for the trial month. All righty. So I'm going to back up so it's a little easier for you to see me. We're going to want to have our scarf and our sticky note or letter close by. We're going to start with 10 of the basic power-ups. Remember, those are specific to improving your posture. So you'll sit towards the front edge of your chair. Make sure your feet are super wide apart. You want a nice, stable base. Knees are also wide apart. And with your hands on your thighs, you'll lean forward. Try to push your knees open. Get a nice, big stretch through the low back and thighs. And then when you power up, Open your arms wide, extend your elbows, open your palms, feel your chest expand. You don't need to arch your back, but just try and sit with the best posture you can as if you're holding a crown on your head. Let's go for 10. We drop down and then press up, arms open for one. Down, up, two. Down, up, three. Down, up, four, down, up, five, down, up, six, 
down, up, seven, down, up, eight, down, up, nine, down, up, ten. Beautiful. Now we're going to do the rock and reach. That helps to facilitate a weight shift, which is the foundation of every movement that we make. So you'll start by taking your right elbow, place it as far forward on your right knee as you possibly can, and then rainbow your left arm all the way up and over as if you could touch the far wall and then feel the stretch through your ribs. We'll call that number one. We're going to go to 10. Switch sides. Right arm reaches all the way up and over to the left. Get a nice stretch. That's two. Switch up and over three switch up and over for four switch nice big reach for five switch really big stretch for six switch seven switch eight switch nine switch 10. Good. Come on up back to center. Next, we're going to twist using trunk rotation to reduce rigidity. And right now we're just kind of warming up our bodies. We're doing the basic movements. And then in a few minutes, we'll add in more challenges specifically to target our balance system. So just bear with me. Let's kind of warm up. And then I promise we'll get to the true balance focus that you all tuned in for. Go ahead and open your arms up nice and wide. Again, extend your elbows. Palms are as open as you can. Then you're going to take your left arm, sweep it over towards the right. Feel your left knee drop down towards the floor. You can actively try to push your heel back and away so that you're getting a nice stretch at the front of your hip and thigh. And then this is already a way to start to incorporate head turns for getting your vestibular system active. Try to focus your eyes in the direction that your hands are pointing. Then we're going to open up nice and big to the center. Your eyes have refocused to center. Then you'll take right hand, bring it all the way over to the left. Again, push your leg back. Feel a stretch through your hip and thigh and then open up. Let's speed it up for a full 10 reps. Left hand sweeps to the right. That's one. Open, two. Open, three. Open, four. Open, five. Open, six. Open, seven. Open, eight. Open, nine. Open, 10 and open. Good work. Step your feet in towards the center. The final of the power moves in setting is a power step that's helping to initiate with large amplitude movement to really get a good start with any walking or transitional movements like getting in and out of a car, in and out of a restaurant booth, in and out of a bathtub, you name it. We need to take a big step. So for this one, you'll start with right leg. Really try to lift it up as high as you can. Then reach it out to the side as far as you can. You'll lean into it towards the side you step to. Then bring hand and leg back to center. Then we'll switch sides to the left again. High knee lift. Step out and over as if there was something very valuable under your foot. And back to center. And to increase how hard you're working, try to add a stomp or a clap. Let's go for 10. Right side first. Here's one. Center, two. Center, three. Center, four. Center, five. Center, six. Center, seven. Center, eight. Center, nine, center, 10, and center. The other reason that we like to incorporate the stomp or the clap is not only does it signify high effort, but it indicates the movement has come to a complete stop. 
I could very easily kind of just slide my feet around and lazily move my arm around. It's not going to make any sound, but it's also kind of everything is flowing one to the next. And for people with Parkinson's, that is significant because part of the disease process affects the timing and rhythm mechanism within our brains. So for people who experience hastening or um, festination, that feeling that your steps are small and maybe they're starting to speed up and all of a sudden your body is moving too fast, that's because all the movements have blurred together. That timing mechanism is not allowing you to take one step, two step, three step, four step. It's kind of all a jumble. So by overly exaggerating and training, one movement comes to a complete stop. Then I start the next movement. You're helping to recalibrate your brain and move in a better way. So now that we have done all of those seated power moves with just kind of the regular focus on amplitude and effort, let's do them all again in a way that helps to stimulate the inner ear balance system, improve your ability to track things visually, and coordinate your head and your eyes. We'll start back at the top with our power up. We are going to do this with eyes closed this time. And I guarantee that you're going to notice it feels different. It's much harder to move big. It's harder to give high effort. Make sure you're towards the front edge of the chair. Feet are nice and wide apart. Close your eyes. Hands on thighs. Lean forward. Then press up. Open your arms. Keep those eyes closed for one. Drop down and up, two. Down, up, three. Down, up, four. Down, up, five. Down, up, six. Down, up, seven. Down, up, eight. Down, up, nine down, up, 10. Good. Go ahead and open your eyes. You may notice that you feel a little uh, stirred up. You feel a little motion sick, perhaps, maybe a little dizzy. That's normal, and it further indicates that this type of training is going to be really beneficial for you because you are very reliant on your eyes for balance, and you need to be more reliant on the inner ear vestibular system, for example. Next variation we're going to add, you'll need your little scarf or hand towel or paper towel or whatever you have. I don't care which hand you hold it in, but we're going to power down. And then when you power up, fling that scarf and try to catch it in the other hand. Importantly with this one, I want your eyes to track the scarf as it flies up and as you catch it in your hand. Again, we're going to go from one hand to the other, alternating sides. Let's power down, bending forward, scarf in hand. Then come up, fling it as high as you can, catch it, and then come back down for one. Up and throw, catch for two. Down, up, throw, catch, that's three. Down, up, throw, catch for four. Down, up, throw, and catch for five. Down, up, throw, catch, six. Down, up, throw, catch, seven. Down, up, throw, catch, eight down, up, throw, catch, nine, down, up, throw, and whoop, I lost mine on that one. That was 10. Ooh, take a little break. Nicely done. All right, for our rock and reach, you can hold the scarf if you'd like, or you can set it down. Our variation here is going to include tracking the scarf with your eyes. 
So as a reminder, right elbow will start on right knee, then left arm is going to come all the way up and over as far as you can. So you'll start kind of looking to the left and then follow your hand or follow the scarf. If you don't have a scarf, just focus on following your hand. To add in a little bit of dual tasking or fine motor, you can switch the scarf into your other hand because now it's going to be the one reaching. So both elbows will be on both knees in the center. We'll look to the right, big rainbow up and over, and switch hands again. So we'll go for 10 reps. If you're using your scarf, start with it in your left hand. Look to the left, big rainbow up and over, switch hands come to center and then look to the right, right arm up and over for two, switch, left arm, three, switch, four, switch, five, switch, six, switch, seven, switch, eight, switch, nine, switch, 10 and come on back to center. Really great work. Okay, now we're going to do the twist using our sticky note or business card or whatever you wrote your letter on. So I have the letter A. It's right in the center of my two by two square. If you didn't have a chance to get a letter, then I'm going to ask you to hold up your thumb and try to follow your thumb. It's best to use something with a crisp, bold outline, but if you don't have it, next best thing is your thumb. And your goal is going to be to follow the letter as we twist. You'll start with it in your left hand, looking towards the left. Then as left hand comes across, towards the right, you'll follow the letter the entire time, switch the letter into your right hand, keep your eyes glued to it as you open through center, and then keep looking at that letter as right arm sweeps over and opens. Okay, we'll go for a count of 10 just like we have been. Start with your letter in your left hand or left thumb up. Eyes are going to stay glued to the letter the entire time. Here we go, left hand and letter, go over to the right for one. Keep your eyes on it as you open, then letter and right hand come over to the left for two. Open, three. Open, four. Open, five. Open, six. Open, seven open, eight, open, nine, open, ten, and open. Whew. I already noticed the difference in how I feel it kind of in my brain and my body compared to the first round of the normal twists. It's because you have a lot more blurring of your vision when you're trying to focus on one target, but everything else is going on behind you. And we need our eyes to be able to do that. We need to be able to look both ways when we're crossing the street and have our eyes move with our head and end up at a stable target. Last thing we're going to do in sitting, it's going to be our power step. We'll go back to eyes closed, just like we did with the, that power up. So you'll start seated towards the front of your chair. Feet are parallel in the center. You're going to take right leg, right arm. Eyes are closed. Let's step it out and reach for one. Back to center. Now left side, big stomp for two. Center three, center, four, keep it big, five, center, high effort, that's six, center, seven, center, eight, center, nine, center, ten, and center. Whew. Take a second. If that brought on any dizziness or unsteadiness, let it pass. You can take a few deep breaths. And then we'll go ahead and stand up and move on to our standing power moves, which are going to be even more challenging to our balance. So you can keep 
a chair close by to have something stable to grasp onto if you need it at any point. Um, you can also stand close to a wall or like close to a desk or a countertop, something that you can touch for balance. Feel free to grab some water if you need it. I've been talking a lot, so I needed it. And then if you have your folded up towel or balance foam, go ahead and grab that now. For standing, we're going to, instead of doing all the regular power moves, do the regular version plus a few bonus versions to specifically target balance. We'll start with the power up. Again, that is always for posture. You want feet wide. You're going to squat down, reaching hips forward, bottom back, then stand up nice and tall and open your chest for one. Down, up, two down, up, three, down, up, four, down, up, five, down, up, six, down, up, seven, down, up, eight, down, up, nine, down, up, ten. Nicely done. Now you can grab your foam or folded towel or couch pillow. Just make sure it can't slip slide out from under you. And if you're concerned, have your chair close by to touch onto for balance. Another 10 repetitions, here we go. It's down and up, one. Down, up, two. Down, up, three. Down, up, four. Down up five down up six down up seven down up eight down up nine down and up for ten great work last progression is going to be to do that with eyes closed that is definitely a huge balance challenge so be safe you can hold on to your chair, maybe back up so that you're really close to a wall so that you can't lose your balance backwards, and open your eyes each time after you stand up. So it'll be eyes closed. We squat down, power up, open your one or both arms, and then open your eyes. That's number one. We close, come down and up, open two close down and up open three we're gonna speed it up down and close up and open for four close down up open five down and up open six down up open seven down up open eight down up open nine down up open for ten beautiful carefully step off that piece of foam we're going to do one more round of power ups the first five your right foot only will be on the foam and your left leg is going to be behind in just the position of a comfortable stance. So we'll do five in this orientation, and then we'll do five in the other orientation. If you want to make it even more spicy, even more challenging, go in a heel to toe orientation, like so, but have both uh, the back foot on the floor and the front foot on the foam. So look, this is kind of ultimately the goal for the most challenge. But you can have some horizontal space in between to make it a little bit easier. We're going for five, then switching feet. Drop down, up, one. Down, up, two. Down, up, three. Down, up, four. Down, up five switch feet you can go narrower if that last round was easy down up six down 
up seven, down, up eight, down, up nine, down, up 10, and take a break. You can move the foam out of the way for a moment. Next thing is gonna be a rock and reach. We're gonna go side to side and forward backwards. The purpose of this exercise is to get a good weight shift so that one foot is empty and capable of taking a big step. If you think about it, if there's equal weight on both feet and I try to lift one up, my body's not gonna let me because it's part of my support. So if I take it away, I'm gonna fall. And that is um, often the case for people who have freezing or that sense of their feet being glued to the floor. They're not shifting to empty one foot in order to take the step. And then we need to shift, empty the next foot and take the step. So like I said, we'll go side to side first, then forward backwards to add in our extra challenge. Take your right arm reach it up and towards the right as you shift your weight to the right. You can also follow your hand with your eyes. I want you to try and think of like you're trying to grab something um, on a tall shelf or pick an apple off a tree. Then we'll come back to center, nice big weight shift, up and over to the left. If your balance allows it, lift that back leg so that now you're practicing your single limb balance with the shifts. We'll start to the right, doing 10 repetitions alternating. Here we go, up and over to the right for one. Switch sides, two, switch, three, switch, four, switch, five, switch, six, switch, seven, switch, eight, switch, nine, switch, 10, and come to center. Great. Now we're going to go forward and backwards for five. I'd like your right foot to be in front, left foot behind, the distance of just a comfortable step. You'll shift your weight forward as you reach forward. Again, trying to let your back heel lift. Option to completely lift your entire foot for single leg balance. Then you'll shift your weight back at a minimum front toes lift, arms open, but if balance allows, you can completely lift your foot up to be single leg balance on that back leg. Option to add a chair for a little bit of balance support. Going for five, here we go. Weight shifts forward and weight shifts back for one. Forward, back, two. Forward, back, three. Forward, back, four. Forward, and back for five. Now we're gonna add on the progression. We're going for single leg balance. Use the chair if you need it. Holding for the same number of seconds as the repetition that we're on. So on number one, we'll shift forward and hold for one. And then we'll shift back and hold for one. On number two, it's forward, hold, one, two. Back, hold, one, two. Building up to five seconds. Use that support, be safe. Let's go. We shift forward, hold for one. Back, hold, one. Forward, hold, one, two. Back, hold, one, two. Forward, hold, one, two, three. Back, hold, one, two, three. Forward, hold, one, two, three, four. Back and hold, one, two, three, four. Forward, hold, one, two, three, four, five, back, hold, one, two, three, four, five. Excellent work. Okay, now we got to switch sides. We did it to one, we need to do it to the other. A little faster because hopefully now you're familiar. Going for just the weight shifts first, 
five repetitions. Here we go. It's forward and back for one. Forward, back, two. Forward, back, three. Forward, back, four. Forward, back, five. Now we add on the holds right into it. Right foot, uh, excuse me, left foot is forward. Lean forward, lift back leg if you can, hold for one. Then back, hold, one. Forward, one, two. Back, one, two. Forward, one, two, three. Back, hold, one, two, three. Forward, hold, one, two, three, four. Back, hold, one, two, three, four. Forward, hold, one, two, three, four, five. Back and hold, one, two, three, four, and five. I feel like I might have skipped number three. If I did, I apologize. Next up, it is our twist. Regular version first, then a couple bonus additions. Feet are wide, pointing roughly towards the 10 and 2 o'clock position. Arms are going to open up super wide, just like we did in sitting. You'll take your left arm, sweep it over to the right, trying to pivot off your back leg. So you are eyes, hands, shoulders, hips. If there was headlights or lasers on all of those body parts, they would point towards the wall on your right hand side. And you'll open up big to center, twist, and move towards the left. I encourage you, even now, to follow your hand with your eyes, getting that visual tracking in. We start nice and open, best posture. Here we go. Left hand moves to the right for one. Open, switch, two. Open, three. Open, four. Open, five. Open, six. Open, seven. Open, eight. Open, nine. Open, ten. And open. Good work. Grab that popsicle stick or note card or whatever you have your target written on. Just something with a bold outline. Same thing, starting with the stick in your left hand, but now your eyes are going to follow the letter as you turn, and then stay glued to the letter when it switches hands so that you can follow it to the other hand or other side. Start with the stick in your left hand or target in your left hand. Eyes are looking left. Then everything moves over to the right. Switch hands. Open. Eyes are looking at your target in the right hand. Twist and switch for two. Open. Three. Open. Four. Open. Five. Open. Six. Open. Seven. Open. Eight. Open. Nine open, 10, and open. Nice work. If that made you feel a little bit unsteady in any way, take your time, rest, and recover. And then we'll do our power steps. We'll go side to side first, and then add in our progression. So now feet are a little bit closer together. They're parallel but not touching, creating a stable base so that you're able to shift your weight from side to side without losing your balance. We'll start with right leg, right arm, lift up high, step out to the side, lean into it. That's number one. Come back to center, left foot and left arm, step and reach for two. Center, three, center, four, center, five, center, six, center, seven, center, eight, center, 
9, center, 10, and center. All right. Now we're going to need that piece of foam or your folded up towel. This is definitely more of a challenge. So if you need something to hold on to, you can stand on that pillow, but have a chair in front. We're going to continue to alternate sides, but it can be helpful to hold on, come back to center, switching hands, so that something is always holding on for a little bit of stability. All right, feet are on our pillow. Let's get ready. Right leg, right arm, step to the right for one, then come back to center. Catch your balance. Left leg, left arm for two, center, three, center, four, center, five, center, six, center, seven, center, eight, center, nine, center, ten, and center. A plus everyone, good work. Now we could keep going. I can combine using just these three tools, the target, the scarf, and the pillow. We could scale up or scale down the level of challenge in so, so many ways, probably, <laughs> you know, more ways than I can count, combining standing on the pillow and throwing and catching, or standing um, in heel to toe and throwing and catching, or standing on the pillow with eyes closed. There's so many ways that we can continue to progress the challenge to continually improve balance. But for the sake of this presentation, I did want to include at least one more position of power moves, which is hands and knees. There's additionally lying on your back and lying face down on your belly. And while those positions have a multitude of benefits, including improving posture, improving ability to move in bed, and many other things, for the sake of this presentation and really trying to highlight balance, I decided that we could skip just those two positions. If you have a yoga mat or um, your foam or towel that you've been doing using, you can go ahead and lay that out. I'm going to grab a quick sip of water. And then we'll get down onto hands and knees. You can keep that foam underneath of you. Be careful, be safe with the transition down. And then our first movement is going to be the power up. This is kind of the traditional version of it. You'll bend your elbows, lowering your forehead down to the floor, and then push hard into the floor to spring your body up, extend your hips. Now I'm on my foam more so because it cushions my knees for comfort, but it definitely adds a level of instability to have more padding underneath of you. So again, if you wanna try this now or later, maybe do it with a pillow under your knees, maybe try it with your eyes closed and see how different it feels with those modifications. The closer your hands are to your knees, the easier it's gonna be to really spring yourself up. Let's go for 10. Drop down and then up for one. Down, up, two. Down, up, three. Down, up, four. Down, up, five. Down, up, six. Down, up, seven. Down, up, eight. Down, up, nine down and up for 10. Nice. All right, next we're going to do a modified version of the rock and reach. Traditionally, um, we rock backwards and forwards, but for this today, this presentation, balance focus, I want us to actually reach side to side in a tall kneeling position. Again, my foam underneath my knees, it's good padding, but it also adds extra challenge 
for my balance. You could continue to progress this by trying to do it with eyes closed. It's nice, we're close to the ground, there's less fear of falling involved, but you're still challenging all of your balance systems. So let's get arms out nice and open. Shift your weight as far as you can over to the right. Look at that right hand for a head turn, that's one. Switch sides to the left for two. Switch, three. Switch, four. Switch, five. Switch, six. Switch, seven. Switch, eight. Switch, nine. And switch for 10. Whew. Next up, last thing before we open it up for any questions that folks may have, we're gonna combine our twist and our step in a modified version. So this is a little different than the traditional power moves, but it's gonna be a great balance challenge. You can start by having your hands on the floor right underneath of your shoulders. And go ahead and do this with me. You'll shift your weight back, bringing your heels towards your bottom. And then as you shift your weight forward, try to launch that right foot forward so it's all the way on the outside of your right hand. And once you get there, start to bring yourself up into a tall half kneeling posture. Now, any one of those steps may have already felt limited or difficult. If so, we wanna just work in that range, work in what's challenging. But if possible, we can continue to progress. We're building balance by being in this unstable position and then we'll bring both hands forward in front of you. And then for five repetitions, open the right arm up, twisting back, following your hand with your eyes. Let's go all together. Right arm opens, look at it as far back as you can. That's one. Hands come together. Right arm opens, two, together. Open, three, together. Open, four, together. Open, five, together. Drop your hands down, step right foot underneath of you, and then lean back, shift your weight, explode forward, left foot takes a nice big step. You can use your hands to walk yourself up. Think about pressing your hips forward like you're showing off a belt buckle. Arms reach out in front, and then we're gonna twist five times to the left. Ready, left arm opens, look behind, that's one. Hands come together. Left arm opens again for two. Together, open, three. Together, open, four together, open for five, and come together. Great work, everyone. That's gonna be the conclusion of our power moves with balance focus. I'm gonna come back up front to the computer, pull up um, the code for the free month trial, and then also if anyone would like to unmute and ask a couple questions, you're welcome to. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that inspired you to see that even with just some really basic household items, you can up the challenge of a variety of different exercises to really improve balance over time. So let me just share my screen again here. And as a refresher, here is our um, online class schedule that can be found on our website. And then if you're interested in trying the online membership, you're gonna wanna go to Rogue in Motion and you can use the code free month uh, to get one month for free. You'll get brought to this sign-in page, check the month option, not the annual, but the month on the bottom there. And then when you scroll down 
You do not need to put in any credit card information. You'll see this box with a promo code. You type in free month, apply that code, and then it's going to reduce the payment to zero. Um, again, you don't need to put in, in any credit card information unless you've gone through the month trial, you've decided you like it, and you want to join for future. Um, are there any questions? All right. And then I'll just kind of conclude with pulling up some of the great things that membership has to offer. There's monthly and annual packages. Again, it's www.rogueinmotion.com. You have access to live classes multiple times throughout the day, Monday through Friday, including exercise, speech, cooking, um, information on uh, kind of a variety of different topics through the monthly membership and educational meetings. Um, all of our classes are recorded and put into a video library that you can access anytime on demand. Uh, so you could, if you were so motivated, <laughs> literally watch hundreds of classes per week um, and never have to say the exact same one twice. We go through themes every week of the month. We start with um, a mobility focus, like moving your body and getting into different functional positions, like in and out of bed, on and off of the floor. Uh, then we also have a balance and posture week, which is similar to what we did today. There is a strength week focus. We're oftentimes using more like hand weights or resistance bands. And then a flexibility week where we really kind of slow things down. We work more on cognitive challenges, incorporating dual tasking into the workouts and the flexibility of our muscles. So holding stretches for longer. Um, and we cycle through all of those themes so that we're trying to um, regularly address all of the things in which people may feel they need help with. So I hope you enjoyed. Again, I hope you realize that just with, uh, you know, small little tweaks to things, you can definitely ramp up how difficult it is um, to, to stimulate changes and growth in your balance. And I hope everyone has a fabulous day and a good rest of your week. Thanks for tuning in.